This is Roy Hargrove and you're on Riviera Jazz Club. Oh, the French people, they get it. They understand bebop. So I'd love to play in France. Johnny Griffin lived here for many years and also uh, Kenny Clark, even Bud Powell. So yeah, I love France. I have my quintet and uh, we're gonna play some, uh, some of my music and a few standards, the regular jazz thing. My band is always com comprised of friends, people that I know that I met in some jam sessions and uh, just great musicians, you know. Um, my father was a music collector, and I started playing in the band when I was like nine years old. And um, I've been playing since then. I had a lot of great teachers. Some of them um, turned me on to a lot of beautiful things. Uh, by the time I was 17 or so, I started coming into contact with all of my heroes in jazz, you know. Um, and some who were not so famous, but uh, very experienced and seasoned musicians like Larry Willis and Ronnie Matthews and uh, Walter Booker, Clifford Jordan, Frank Morgan. And uh, these were the people that gave me the tools in which I uh, have right now. And then I just pass it on to the younger musicians. The only thing I could say about that is you gotta practice. Practice. Because brass is very unforgiving. You have to um, do the rudimentary exercises that it takes to make sure that you have a good sound and that you have a great technique. And then on the musician side, you have to listen to a lot of music and uh, dissect it and learn it. I would tell any young musician, especially if you want to play jazz, you have to learn the songs that are in the, um, what they call the Great American Songbook, standards. You know, and also, you know, don't close the door on bebop because Charlie Parker and Bud Powell, Delonious Monk, and these guys are the people that created the language that we speak when we play. So you really have to learn that as well. It's, it's a continuous learning process that never ends. It's even when you're not with your instrument, you practice because the music is also here in your brain. So you have to continue and exercise it so that when you go to perform for people, you have something to say, you have a story to tell. You use the tools that you've learned when you study. I'm influenced, of course, by Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, Kenny Durham, Fat Navarro, um, so many greats, you know, Roy Eldridge, Miles Davis is definitely one of my influences uh, as far as his uh, use of space and style and harmony. I sit at the piano and I play chords and then I try to find the melody that goes with them, you know, and all the time considering rhythm because I was also educated in rhythm by some great musicians from Cuba uh, like um, Anga and Changuito, Chucho Valdez, you know, rhythm is also a very important thing, but you know, as far as when I compose, I do it all at the piano. I tell musicians all the time, you have to play the piano. Because Dizzy Gillespie said, the entire spectrum of the notes you want to play are there. Well, first of all, I don't believe in terms and terminology when it comes to music. For me, it's all a very vast world in which you you know, you have to be a part of in every aspect of it. So when you say neo soul to me, that means nothing. <laughs> it's just music, you know. When I play with people like D'Angelo, these are my friends. So, you know, when I go to play with them, then I adapt to the a particular style in which they play. And I try to uh, make music that will fit into that style. Uh, 
you know, whether it's funk or jazz or whatever you want to call it, you know, for me, it's about making music. So, you know, I mean, I make the music first and then the people title it and call it whatever they want to call it. People call jazz a thing, but it's really about playing music. And what jazz is, so to speak, is the ability to improvise and make music on the spot. And you can do that if you have the tools, which involves playing acoustic, acoustic, acoustic music, you know, which is rhythm, harmony, and melody, then you can play just about in any style but it takes the ability to improvise to do that. And that just involves collecting melodies and rhythms and learning how to play harmony. Um, I mean, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something, man. The, the hip hop thing is bothering me now because I think that people don't understand really what it takes uh, to really deal with a complete style. I mean, you know, you can't take hip hop and then add jazz to it because then it becomes too complicated for people. You know, if you're gonna play hip hop, then you have to do it and have a complete understanding of the style in which you're playing it, you know. That means it can't be too busy and too complicated. Actually, the more abstract it is, the more people can understand it. I think especially the rappers themselves, you know, they like the abstract, you know, the sounds of life, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, as far as uh, where it's going, I mean, you know, I think there are a lot of people right now who are uh, trying to fuse things and try to create some new type of music, but really, I think it's important to understand history so that you can create something that has, that stands on some kind of integrity. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's everything, man. I mean, the, the whole reason why I play is for God. It's the whole reason why. There's no other reason other than that. I'm in service, you know? What I'm here to do is to touch people and make them feel better through music, you know, through art. And that is just like a streamline directly from the creator to the, to me, to the people, you know. So I try to keep that channel as open as possible. And I think it's really like probably the main thing. <laughs> Thank you.